troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler. You are voting for the devil. Don't you know that? Has she done for black people? I'm not going to sit up here and claim that I am the most neutral when I find out people are voting a certain way. Like when I find out people are voting for Kamala or Justin Trudeau. I generally mock them as just being idiots because they are, if that's who they're voting for. But you never really see, at least not me, react this way. Now I get it, I know I'm not some old white lady and it seems to be like a white lady thing. You see me keep going back to that little feature that seems to be consistent with all the people that are yelling and screaming and upset and making everything about them and oh my god, I can't believe it, I'm gonna yell at everybody, I'm gonna rip signs off the ground. Oh my god, Trump, 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 Trump. But it had to have gotten that way somehow, some way. And then when you look at some of the trends on the Twitter, you see stuff like that. And 534,000, um, which crazy, but then people, you know, take the piss right out of it. Most of the people are taking the piss out of it when they are putting that into their tweets. But then they kind of hashtag this, which is just hilarious to me. It is so funny that that's the direction that people choose to go in. But it's all about how the liberals and these white ladies who sit at home all day, these upper middle class housewives, white housewives, and how they get to the where they're at. And a lot of them are sitting around watching The View, and we all know that The View is just the bastion of knowledge and fairness and unbiased opinions. But what if it's coming from somewhere else? What if it's coming from the desperation of the Democrats and Kamala Harris? It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. That's right. They did it again. They went back to the playbook of 2016 because we all know that worked out so incredibly well for Hillary Clinton when they decided to play it this way. You know, because everyone knows that you're invoking the little mustache guy when you're talking about lowering taxes, cutting down the amount of government agencies there that are eating up a lot of the tax dollars, bringing business back to the country, closing the borders, lower gas, more affordable food. Everyone knows that that is definitely small mustache guy. Everyone knows that. And that's the problem with Democrats. You couldn't tell me the policies of Kamala Harris. The policies of the Democrats for the last eight years have been Trump is bad. We can't let Trump win. Trump is a threat to democracy. There's no actual policies that go into play here. Now, Kamala's talked about not taxing tips, which wasn't originally a Trump idea. They talked about, you know, securing the border, which was originally a Trump idea. Now, all the things that they're talking about that Kamala saying I'm going to do is all these things that they're already not doing, by the way, that they haven't done with her as second in command, if not first in command with Dementia Man sitting there. That's a good little superhero name, by the way, Dementia Man, where he just, just has a cape and nothing else on, just flapping in the wind. But I just find it ironic that that would be her final message, that it just goes to show they've learned nothing. They've learned absolutely nothing. Dr. Umar Johnson was talking to Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon talked about how there's this strong black woman running. And Umar Johnson went, uh, black? Is she black? And it's less about, to him, what she is 
visually and what she's willing to do policy wise and he brings up a lot of good points as to why her race doesn't matter and this is coming from somebody where apparently race is the only thing that matters so this is how far away from the true like black power caucus i guess you could call it of within the voting base of the united states this is how far away they are from kamala harris but this is the same woman who said i'm not going to do anything that's going to only benefit black people while she sat in office and watched president joe biden pass an anti-asian hate bill anti-asian hate executive order native american executive order lgbtq executive order and law now those are a lot of semantics in a sense because I, we, we've heard this argument before. She can say the, a lot of that stuff is taken out of context. A lot of the, the process of when she's saying she wants to do things for all people and not just black people specifically. Well, going back to what I said, as the pageantry of representation, you still would lean more to say that you would this old, rich, billionaire, 1% white man be the representation of the United States of America opposed to a woman who has done the work what work? She's definitely done community what work. What has she done for black people? I'm not voting for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. So what's the solution? For Vice President Harris, she can get my vote. Former President Trump, he could get my vote. Make a public pledge of what you're going to do for us when you get in there. That includes one of the five major areas of concern for black America. Which are? Miseducation, mass incarceration, homelessness, and gentrification, police assassination, and economic apartheid. Now this all just reeks again desperation on behalf of the democrats because the polls are showing she's gonna lose and her manufactured popularity over the last six months is starting to bite them in the ass because we, everyone remembers back in 2020 she was the least popular of like the 10 democrat candidates that were available there she got absolutely destroyed by tulsi gabbard and now people are just sort of pretending like those things weren't real. That they're pretending like all of a sudden they liked her the whole time when nobody did. People were more into Pete Buttigieg than they were into Kamala Harris. And she is also the ultimate DEI hire when you really think of it. Because Joe Biden openly said that his vice president was going to be a black woman. Not the most qualified person. None of that. It was going to be a black woman specifically for the representation. And now they've shifted again to this identity politics because... Like I've said in the past, they didn't really have the ability to win on policy because their policies have been in practice and they have sucked. The country has fallen completely into chaos economically because of these Democrat policies that people were fed up with in 2015 and 2014 that they voted for Donald Trump originally for. And I did say from a while ago, I thought it was going to be Michelle Obama because I'm like, they can't win on that. So they got to lean heavy onto the culture war aspect and they can play racism, sexism, and even transphobia if they ran Michelle Obama. But they kind of left the transphobia and homophobia part out when they ran Kamala Harris. They just went with sexism, racism to go with that because they tried sexism and racism back when they ran the white lady who is probably one of the most racist people ever because like who really carries hot sauce in their purse only i guess when you're on hot 97 but this is what the culture war has yielded this type of desperation this type of patheticness that only a very small amount of people are really falling for at this point now i wonder if people will have the courage enough to vote against it to vote against the democrats uh that are willing to face the optics of not voting Democrats because so many people vote based on the optics of just the perception of who they're voting for, of who you voted for. And people don't like the optics of voting for Trump because everyone lives online, everyone lives on social media. So if you get 10 people saying that you're a racist or sexist for not voting for Kamala Harris, people take that to heart a lot more than they would otherwise because in the grand scheme of things, there's a handful of people is nothing compared to the general population. But a lot of people fall for that. So how the optics will affect people's voting patterns here, or at least how they outwardly vote, is going to be something to watch. But it's clear they're desperate. It's clear they know they're losing. And they're pushing as hard as they can that culture war button. And I do 100%. I'm saying it now. You can roll the tape back later. If they do lose, which is very likely here... Expect Michelle Obama to be the running in 2028 so they can add into the culture war aspect 
and also the popularity in general of their candidate just to try and win. And then that's when chaos will ensue right on time for 2030 because everyone talks about the 2025 project when Agenda 2030 has always been the actual thing we should worry about. So Trump Vance 2024, maybe, hopefully.